so I represent regions, public authorities, public efforts um, in investigation uh, launched by the European Commission, and I have been doing so for 15 years already. So I did um, have a certain experience in this, uh, this partner. Um, so you've, be, you've been hearing about those very interesting um, challenges and projects for, for Tampere region, uh, both in the city and, and for the airport. Me being the lawyer, I, am to, I have to say, oh, these are very interesting, but, but there are rules to comply to. And of course, I have 30 minutes today to explain you those rules. And I would like to be very pragmatic, of course, because otherwise it's going to be very, very boring. Um, so, um, state aids are forbidden under European law, unless they can be authorized, because they are good for <coughs> the economy, they are good for the customers. So I will explain you first what is state aid, because if it is state aid, again, it is forbidden, but it can be authorized by the Commission. Second, I will explain you the evolution of the Commission's practice in the aviation sector. And then I will give you a bit of hope of what is possible to do for Tampere Airport. So first, about state aid. Um, state aid, as I said, is forbidden by the Treaty on the Functioning of the uh, European Union. Um, there is no definition of state aid, although it's a very important notion, but it has been explained in the European jurisprudence and in the Commission's practice. Recently, the Commission adopted a notice on the notion of state aid. It's a document of 60 pages. I do not know a lot of people who read it through, through except me, maybe. Um, but it can be very useful for public authorities. State aid is any public intervention that grants an advantage to a company having an economic activity and um, it is selective, which means that it favors certain um, company and it has to affect competition and affect trade between member states. That is the notion of state aid. There are four conditions that are cumulative, which means that if one of those elements is not there, it's not state aid. For instance, if a public intervention is purely local. If there is no international company interested, there it wouldn't be state aid. Another um, criteria, selectivity. If you have a measure that applies to all company in a member state, for example, a member state, Ireland, um, 15 years ago decided to lower the tax imposed on company, a lot of member states, member states said, mm, distortion of competition, state aid. It was not state aid, because any company located in line could benefit from that um, tax measure. State aid resources, it must be financed through public resources, but it could be a subsidy or a tax reduction. Could be also a loan, a public loan that has been granted at a too favorable rate, a rate a bank would not um, grant. And it has to um, imply an economic advantage to a company. Very easy when, it's a, when uh, it's a subsidy. When it's a loan, a capital injection could be more difficult to assess. So as I said, if one of those four conditions is missing, that's not state aid, which means the Commission is not competent to assess it. As I said, state aids are forbidden unless they are good for um, the economy, the markets, etc., which means that the Commission has to control them. And the Commission is the only authority that may authorize them. Over the years, the Commission has adopted communication guidelines and more recently a regulation that set up the criteria the Commission um, set to authorize investment aids, regional aids, aids for research, aids for the protection of environment, etc. As I said, the Commission has to authorize them, which means that member states are compelled to notify state aid. 
More recently, the Commission adopted regulation because it's impossible for the Commission to authorize all the aids adopted in 28 countries in the European Union. Just to give you an example, the unit within the Commission in charge of all aid in the transport sector, which means airports, airlines, ports, etc., there are only 15 people. It's not a lot. Of course, if a member state does not comply with this rule of notification, it means that the aid is illegal, which means that any competitor can go before a national judge and say this aid is illegal and a national judge will be compelled to impose the reimbursement. It doesn't mean that the Commission would necessarily consider that it can not be authorized, but still it's a huge risk. And there is an example, for example, um, in Strasbourg, Ritter, uh, a subsidiary of Air France, challenged the decision of the Chamber of Commerce of Strasbourg to conclude a contract with Ryanair. At that time, there was no investigation of the European Commission on that contract. But the national administrative judge considered that the Chamber of Commerce had not behaved like a private investor, that the contract con contained aid and annulled it and forced Ryanair to reimburse the aid. So how to escape um, the application of state aid rules? One of it, one rule is um, the market economy operator principle. It is linked to the commission of the economic advantage. In the treaty, you have a disposition that allows member states to intervene in the economy. It has been there for more than 15 years, 50 years. And from that principle, the Commission has set up the criteria of egality between public and private companies. Member states may intervene in the economy, but they have to behave such as a private investor. And the counterpart is the fact that the European Commission may not discriminate or favor public companies. Over the years, the Commission has set up a practice very detailed on how public authorities have to behave when they intervene in the economy. And they set up this criteria of the private operator, and it applies to all kinds of economic transaction loans, guarantees, capital injection, sale of lands, etc. First, the Commission would ch check um, if there had been a benchmark of the kind of uh, similar economic transaction. And if, if it's not possible, sometimes the prices are not transparent. Then the Commission will request a business plan that will demonstrate a normal return on the investment and it has to be a very good business plan. And some of the speakers this afternoon <laughs> knows about it because um, SIS have been involved in an investigation, no aid, lucky you. <laughs> Air Baltic uh, was also uh, the object of an um, investigation and the com commission authorized um, a restructuring aid. And Ryanair, we'll mention it <laughs> a bit later, had been the object of 30 or 40 investigation of the Commission. What about the practice of the European Commission in the air, uh, air transport industry? Well, before the liberalization of the air transport sector, there was no issue of state aid because there were no competition between airlines. Therefore, no competition, no state aid. Then, in the 90s, you had the liberalization of air transport. And what's interesting is the first decision of the Commission condemned some airports of uh, abuse of, of dominant position because some of them had set up rebates on airport charges that were discriminatory. For example, Brussels Airport has such a, a rebate system and Sabina, the former national um, flag carrier, benefited from 30, 35% of rebates. 
And the second airline that could benefit from it, I think it was a Scandinavian airline, and it could only benefit from 5% of rebates. And the commission considered that it was an abuse of a dominant position from um, Brussels airports. And there were similar decisions regarding Spain, I think, and um, in one from Sweden as well. And then, of course, you had low-cost company changing the market and the way they negotiated with um, regional airports. And you have the first case regarding Ryanair. Actually, the first one was in 98. Nobody knows about it because it was closed without any decision. Um, and it regarded Charleroi Airport. Um, Ryanair arrived, I think it was 97, at Charleroi, opening a first um, destination to Dublin. And uh, the Belgian authorities received this letter regarding the contract. We helped the Belgian authorities replying to the commission, and that was it. And then in 2001, Ryanair announced that it was going to create its first base at Charleroi Airport, and there was a complaint. At that time, it was anonymous, but at the end, we knew it was Brussels Airport. And now, they still lodge complaint, again, Charleroi Airport, but they don't hide anymore. Um, so you had the first decision of the commission in 2004, and the commission concluded that the, all the incentives granted by the Wallonian region and Charleroi Airport were eight. Some of them could be authorized as start of eight, and the rest had to be reimbursed by um, Ryanair. Of course, at the time, we drew the attention to the sector that this decision would impact the whole sector of regional airports and, and airlines. The Commission in 2005 adopted general aviation guidelines. They were far from being perfect. They were much too broad regarding the private investor or too strict regarding the financing of airports. They were not applied, they were not respected in practice, and they were reviewed recently in 2014. And Tampere also was the object of, of decision. Um, one regarding Ryanair. Fortunately, there was no negative uh, decision, and ra ra one regarding the investment. So, recently we've noticed that there are around 50 investigation of the commission. Some of them have been closed. They all concern first commercial agreement concluded with the airlines, and actually the commission extended those investigation on the financing of airports, because they realized that regional airports were able to finance those contracts because they benefited from AIDS. And under the aviation guidelines of 2005, operating aids to airports were forbidden. For example, Air France lodged a complaint in 2009 against 27 airports in France, all linked to Ryanair. And I remember I had contact with, with the commissioner at that time and they say, we do not know what to do with, <laughs> with this complaint because we don't have the people to um, to launch 27 investigations just for France. As I said, there are 15 people for whole, the whole Europe. So what they did, they selected seven airports. Um, and there have been decision in the Marseille case, Nimpo and Angoulême, there's still three pending. And it's nearly eight years later. And I can tell you that some of them are not very happy that the Commission has not been launching investigation in the 20 other cases that are claiming it's discriminatory. <coughs> so the critics of the Commission are focusing on several points. First, marketing agreements with Ryanair, AMS, with Air. The Commission says it's subsidized routes. Um, in some cases, the Commission um, criticized the fact that the airport charges were too low or discriminatory. They're not high enough to finance the investment of the airports. In some cases, grant handling 
were free. And at one point, it's also questioned the fact that safety, fire protection, security are not economic. That's very important under state aid. State aid can only relate to economic activities, not activities that are from public remit, from the responsibility of the state. You should know that the Commission has a very broad notion of economic activity. For example, hospitals are considered as undertakings in European law. Same for postal services or transport by tram. <coughs> but there we had to explain in the investigation I was involved in that those activities, those missions are imposed on member states and not airports. And therefore, if the states decide to, they could be financed by the states. Finally, um, following the adoption of the aviation guidelines in 2014, there have been around 30 decisions adopted <coughs> by the Commission. And the general trends of this practice um, are the following. Regarding the public financing of airports, both investment and operating aids that are now um, uh, authorized under certain conditions. Well, the Commission has been very favorable in favor of airports for past aids, aids that ha have been granted before 2014. Except in two cases, Gnia, which is very close to Gdansk Airport, and Zweibrücke, which is 40 kilometers away from Saarbrücke. In those two cases, the Commission considered that those both airports were duplicating other airports where there was sufficient capacity available and they decided it should not be authorized, which means that those airports, they have to live without any public aid or they have to be closed. As from 2014, well, I've noticed personally the, the files I've been dealing with that the commission is very, very strict when there are airports close by, which is not the case here, fortunately. <laughs> Regarding incentives in favor of airlines, well, there have been positive decisions, for example, Tampere, Bratislava, Marseille, Charleroi. In those cases, the Commission considered that those public airports behave such as private investors and that the contract they had concluded with Ryanair, but not only Ryanair, other airlines as well, they were profitable for the airports. In some of the cases, regarding, I would say, smaller airports. The decision were negative. Po, Nim, Algero, Zeibrücken, Sardinia. And in those cases, the Commission imposed the reimbursement of the aids from the companies at stake, Ryanair, but as I said, not only. So the conclusion today is the approach of the Commission is much more pragmatic. Charleroi, as I said, in 2004, the Commission considered that all the incentives were AIDS. In 2014, the Commission said they, uh, both the Walloon region and Charleroi Airport behave such as private investor. Complete return of uh, position. So route development under EU framework. As I mentioned already, there were new guidelines adopted in 2014. The new approach regarding um, airports is much stricter to the country of incentives with airlines. Uh, yeah. First, um, investment aids will be limited to maximum aid intensity. Operated aids are now authorized, but under very strict uh, and complex um, rules to apply to. Lighter a few conditions for startup aids for airlines, for new routes, and as I said, a much more pragmatic approach on the private operator principle. So, first, when airports and airlines negotiate, well, I've been heard, I've been told that the first question asked by airlines is how much you give me so that I operate route at your airports. Um, commercial incentives may take many forms, 
could be rebates on airport charges, could be rebates on grant handling, marketing incentives, bonuses uh, for the opening of new routes. The sky is limit. Um, and the good thing is airlines and airports are much more creative than the Commission. So the Commission is always a bit late um, to react on this. So the first uh, thing to do is to check if it, it is a profitable transaction for the airport. At the moment, um, con the Commission considers that there is no market price, so it's impossible to do a benchmark because there are too many public airports in Europe. So many that even the private airports do not behave such as private, which is a bit strange to say, but that's the position of the Commission. <coughs> so, because there is no market price, the Commission would assess in an investigation the business plan drafted by the airports and demonstrating that the deal is profitable. The good thing is the business plan must only take the cost relating to the airline. So if the airport must not, must not hire people, must not acquire new equipment, the cost can be rather limited to, for example, the marketing incentives. And they must compare the cost with the revenue generated by the airline. The revenues are airport charges, the fees on the ground handling if the airport uh, deliver those services itself, and the commercial revenues generated at the airport. For instance, the parking, the restaurant, the commercial concession, etc. Unfortunately, other um, incomes generated at the level of the region the hotels, the taxi, the restaurant, may not be taken into consideration. If the <coughs> private operator principle is not fulfilled, then for the Commission there is aid, and um, the only solution is startup aid that must be notified to the European Commission. And startup aid are rather limited. It's rebate on airport charges, maximum 50%, for airports below 3 million passengers and maximum 3 years. So that's all the conditions for an aid which is very simple for the Commission. <coughs> As I said, mostly development are done by airports that negotiate with airlines. In some cases I've experienced, region may be frustrated um, because you have one public company running all the airports um, in, um, in a country. I'm not talking about Finland, <laughs> talking about Spain. <laughs> and for example, France, where all the large regional airports are run by um, the states. They have a majority um, shareholding in the regional um, airports. In those cases, I assist them to create incentive schemes outside the airport. And there are several solutions to do so. First, you have de minimis aid. There are aid that are maximum 200,000 euros per airline per country per three years. It's not a huge amount, but it's helpful. It's better than nothing. Then you can create a startup aid fund by the region. The region can also grant incentives under the private operator principle and the particularities is that the commission will assess the profitability at the level of the airport even though the airport is not financing the money because it will be linked to the routes at the airports. Another um, solution is the purchase of marketing services to promote tourism. The Commission agrees that a region must promote tourism. It's its mission, you see here. <laughs> the, these are not aids to the people that manufacture that poster. And it is the same when a region 
acquire, for example, space in the metro in Paris or in uh, newspapers. It is the same under some uh, under some certain conditions. Must be the market price. It's better to organize a tender, etc. Another um, solution is public service obligations. The regulation in uh, European law allows public authority to subsidize routes that are not profitable, but they are essential to allow access to a remote region. There are hundreds of those routes in France, also in Scotland for a remote isle, or Madeira, or Sweden. Not in Finland, strangely enough. Lastly, um, it is possible to grant social aid to certain categories of customers, students, elderly people, um, unemployed, to allow them to travel. So as I said, I'm a lawyer, <laughs> so I'm the one saying but. <laughs> but my conclusion here is, you know, in Belgium we have this advert on the radio for lawyers. Um, and first you hear a romantic music for a wedding, and then suddenly you hear plates being broken. And <laughs> the late motive is um, a lawyer, it's better to see them before and to avoid problems after. It's my message. So there is um, constraint, but there are solutions. Um, Much more honestly, boring. I, you talk about lawyers ads. How would you like to see a billboard along the highway in Brussels with a picture of Annabelle and the statement, have you ever tried arguing with a woman? <laughs> <laughs> and an 800 number. <laughs> Do we have any questions? That was so clear. Oh, what else? So, in the middle? presentation there was this uh, distinction between airports that are basically getting away with it and the ones that have to pay back. So actually if I understood that correctly, it's the profitability of the airport that is the criteria. I will I will give you I will not quote names. Uh -huh. I will give yeah. you examples of yeah. okay. files I've followed. Okay. In one that was concluded positively the marketing incentive was one euro and a half per passenger. And in the one that didn't get away, it was 15 euros per passenger. And you have to take into consideration the, the airport charges, which in France are basically the same, but the commercial revenues. And when you are a large airport such as Marseille, you have the parking, you have the restaurant, you have the shops. When you are a small um, airport like Nîmes, I've been to Nîmes, they have one little duty free store and they sell lavender and magazine and they are open an hour per day when there is a flight. So it's much more difficult to show profitability when you don't have the shops and the restaurant, etc. And it's a matter of the amount of marketing incentive that has been agreed on. Actually, smaller it gets. Yeah. And it, what's interesting, oh, too, is, is the fact that the business plan is drafted by the airport. So you airlines, you have no, well, in, in theory, you have no idea if it's profitable or not. Of course, when an airline asks 20 euros per passenger and pays 13 euros in airport charges and goes to a small airport with no shops, they should be aware that there is a risk. <laughs> but um, I've seen um, recently that um, I've been asked for airports to draft legal opinion to certify that it was in compliance with the private operator principle on the request of the airlines because they can't receive the business plan of the airports. It's confidential information. You wouldn't give as an airline, your business plan to 
an airport. It's the same. <laughs> so it, there is more awareness, I would say, from, from airlines adjusting to, um, to the commission practice and the risk it represents because over, the, over some period of time it could be millions of euros to, to have to reimburse. Of course, it's not the end because Ryanair is challenging the negative decision of Po, Nîmes, etc. So we'll see what, where the, what the result will be.